DiscerningHearts.com presents Inside the Pages, insights from today's most compelling authors. I'm your host, Chris McGregor, and I am delighted to be joined once again by Kathleen Beckman, who is the president of the Foundation of Prayer for Priests. She has served the church for 25 years as an international Catholic evangelist, author, Ignatian retreat director, and radio host, and is often featured on EWTN TV and radio. For over a decade, Kathleen has served on the diocesan exorcist team and is the administrator of her diocese exorcism and deliverance ministry. She completed the Association of International Exorcist Rome course, Exorcism and Prayers of Liberation. She sits on the advisory boards of the Pope Leo XIII Institute and Magnificat, a ministry to Catholic women. She is the author of three books, Praying for Priests, God's Healing Mercy, and When Women Pray. With Kathleen Beckman, we go inside the pages of A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, Strategies for Deliverance and Healing, published by Sophia Institute Press. We now continue part two of our conversation with Kathleen, discussing the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph. Yeah, I think it could be honestly said that he is a marvelous patron for those discerning. Yes. And he had to not only discern some very big decisions, but he also had to discern every single day because he really did know that God was in his midst and he had to protect that. Just like we do, God is inside of us by virtue of our baptism, not I who live, but Christ who lives in me from St. Paul. So he was the protector of the presence of Christ in his dwelling place. And we're called to that same type of protection, aren't we? Absolutely. And, you know, I think that with St. Joseph, I think of how, you know, he protected the Christ child. And it's just really in my heart, and I think you you see it throughout the book, the need to protect our children, Chris. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, I start out in the book in chapter two, there's a reference to how how heaven entrusted to the three Fatima children um, a, such an important mission, and how these three little shepherds from Fatima were able to engage as intercessors with hard tasks, really. They fasted. They gave up playing, you know, which is what children do. They prayed rosaries. Um, They gave food to the poor. I mean, these are little children. And I think sometimes, and I think, you know, this year with the St. Joseph, we're going to see um, a little bit of that come out with the care for the child because we see that children, and and this is what I say in the book, are very much a part of the spiritual dynamic in a family. Their prayers are powerful. They have it within them to be schooled about prayer, about spiritual life, about fasting, about little sacrifices, about service. Um, Sometimes in today's world, we may ask less of our children, or if we ask more of them, it may be in wrong ways. But really, in the book, I share about how we must protect our children. And this is where I think St. Joseph and Mother Mary really help us to protect them, but not only protect them in a way that um, they don't engage in the spiritual life, in prayer life, in family life, in service, but in a way that they are engaged in doing the good, uh, the good will of the Father. Now I have to bounce back into the beloved chapter 10 of the book. Yes. Uh, with the Virgin Mary and the angels in spiritual combat, because when you speak about children, there is a story that is that you share in the book from a non-Catholic wife, mother, and nurse after her son's suicide attempt, that praying the rosary for healing and deliverance and how this affected this woman, I thought was very, very powerful. The rosary actually became a prescription for healing and hope. And I think there are so many people, I know you have encountered them, countless numbers, Kathleen, parents, they want to help their children. They just don't know how. They just don't know how. They've done everything. And this story shows you exactly how you can. I am so glad that you mentioned it. It's one of my favorite stories in the book. 
of course, I was absolutely shocked to receive um, communication by email from this woman who was non-Catholic and her son had attempted suicide. And while she was utterly undone and distraught, as we can imagine, in the hospital waiting room to see whether he was going to survive or not, she Googled, um, what was it, healing prayer. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that came up was my rosary for healing and deliverance. She was a non-Catholic. She was so, and in the, you know, in the book, I present it in her words. She gave permission so it's first person. It's actually her telling her story, which I think is very powerful. That's the way we wanted it. And so she talks about how she couldn't even form the thoughts or the prayers. She was so distraught. So she simply read my reflections for healing and deliverance of my own son. And she parroted those prayers and prayed the rosary through that article which she had found on the internet it was an article i wrote for catholic exchange mm -hmm. and her story is so amazing because she's a non-catholic she's an rn and her story of how you know her son did survive but she really um the anchor what really helped her uh was the rosary the discovery of our lady the discovery of the rosary and her story is so very powerful and as you said, it speaks to giving hope to all the parents out there who are distraught because your son or daughter may be in a situation which you perceive so far from God or having rejected God altogether and left the faith or and also doing things that, you know, are so anti-God, if you will. Um, it Her testimony of this non-Catholic RN about her family and the power of the rosary, the power of Our Lady's uh, intercession for the family will, I think, really build up your faith. And faith and building up faith is so very important for spiritual warfare. Mm, I, oh, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, that is about relationship, isn't it? Faith, I've heard it defined, and I'll paraphrase it uh, poorly, I'm sure, but it's essentially God reveals himself to us uh, in all creation and in everything. He reveals himself to us and calls us. And then in turn, we turn and open ourselves to him. Not that God doesn't already see everything in us, but it's the action that we take. Like Abraham, I'm going to give everything to you, open myself completely to you. It's relationship. When you get down to the activity of the enemy, he wants to blow up that relationship. He wants to get right in there and separate us. When you say that, it's important that faith is ultimate. That's why we need what you're doing, Kathleen. That's why we need those helps, don't we? Absolutely. We need to help one another to build up faith. And I'll share a story. I share it in the book. You'll recognize it, uh, Chris. Um, uh, one time I had a dinner party with, uh, uh, pr for priests and the exorcist of our diocese was present. And a younger priest asked him, Father, what would you say actually during the rite of exorcism what contributes to the devil's leaving in in a like what is the actually you know the most powerful thing to make the devil leave and the the wise exorcist priest he thought for a moment and he said faith mm -hmm. faith and he said it's not only the faith of the person and this is what i really want to why i share this it's the faith of the priest, it's the faith of the team, it's the faith, the faith of the church. This is why, you know, being part of the universal church and understanding that we all contribute to the building up of one another's faith. And so if you're lacking in faith, you can pray for more faith and then engage your spouse, your loved ones to pray for an increase in faith. Because faith really is, if that's built up and the demons see that you have strength, your faith is strong in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will not back down from that faith, we see this in the lives of the saints when they're attacked, then the enemy will flee. He is defeated. Because if your faith is so strong in the Lord Jesus Christ, but it, then he will leave. 
But the beauty is we must realize that our faith is, we're surrounded by a community of faith. That's the beauty of the church. We're a family of faith, is it not? Mm -hmm. I don't want to invoke a negative here, but the danger, even within our faith community, we don't treat each other with virtue, with kindness, with love. We may have disagreements on maybe some prudential things, but when our tone doesn't reflect the virtue of Christ, then we're in trouble, aren't we, Kathleen? Oh, absolutely. You know, we want to, um, that's, you know, the enemy comes and he tries to divide and conquer and he does that quite uh, efficiently, uh, I'm afraid. So, um, and and it has been a real problem in the church. We have to be honest about that. Mm -hmm. Um, And we need to acknowledge it and then act in holy daring. You spoke about the faith of Abraham and in the chapter, uh, it, you know, in the book, I, I talk about this holy daring and use Abraham's faith as an example. You know, it, the Lord shows us holy daring when he asks so great of an uh, act of faith from Abraham. And then Abraham uh, shows us holy daring when he's willing to, you know, give up his son as the father asked. And of course, we know he was spared that um, that gift of the son, if you will. But faith becomes so important. And I think we need to uh, be mindful that we are a family of faith so that, you know, whether it's in our families or in our church communities or uh, in the culture at large, that we treat one another with the respect and dignity that is due because the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, has made us all in his image and likeness. So again, I don't, that's, the the hard task of really discipleship is um, something we can't do alone. It's something that we engage our will, but we also engage the help of the church, the help of of our holy family, the church triumphant, the saints, the angels. You know, understanding that the angelic world is all around us, so we're never really alone. And sometimes people will ask me, you know, you travel to all these different nations, and you know, people can't bring my whole family with me or my husband with me. So often I'm alone, but you know, Chris, and I know you relate to this. We're never alone. You know, your guardian angel is with you. And I speak a little bit about angelology in the back of the book. Your angel is with you. The angelic world, the saints, these are real spiritual dynamics that are present to us through the eyes of faith. We'll return to Inside the Pages in just a moment. Did you know that Discerning Hearts has a free app in which you can find all your favorite Discerning Hearts programming? Father Timothy Gallagher, Dr. Anthony Lillis, Deacon James Keating, Mike Aquilina, Dr. Matthew Bunsen, and so many more are found on the Discerning Hearts free app. Did you also know that you can stream Discerning Hearts programming on numerous streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, Tune in, and so many more. And did you know that Discerning Hearts also has the YouTube page? Be sure to check out all these different places where you can find Discerning Hearts. A Prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will, all that I have and call my own. You have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Amen. Hello, my name is Deacon Omar Gutierrez, and I want to ask you to support Discerning Hearts in a special way. We, Chris McGregor, the board, and I all know that not everyone listening can help financially. We know we have listeners from all parts of the world, and we have made a commitment since the beginning to make the truths shared through Discerning Hearts totally free. So while you may not be able to contribute financially, what you can do is certainly pray, but also give us positive reviews on whatever platform you use to listen to us. If it's iTunes, Android, Stitcher, Spotify, however it is that you get these podcasts, or if you're on YouTube and you like our videos, please give us a good rating and write a review. 
The more good ratings and reviews we get, the higher our profile, and the more listeners will discover us, listeners who may have the means to contribute in the future. Please consider rating us and writing a positive review today. We now return to Inside the Pages. And you say it in yet another gem of a chapter. It is. It's just it's, this is actually a beautiful diamond that has so many different facets, this book of yours, Kathleen. And I'm not just no, trying to you. wax poetic on every, on everything, but I, I am. I'm just so stunned and so pleased that there's a resource that's so well done in this subject now out there for people. But you say in chapter eight, Families are invited into the loving joy of the Holy Family's home in Nazareth. The mysterious years of hidden acts of love, joy, prayer, meals, and work contain a secret to happiness. That's what God wants for us, isn't it? I mean, ultimately, this is what he's longing for us to share in. Absolutely. Um, You know, in that same reflection, I talk about, did not the happy memory of their Nazareth years greatly sustain Mother Mary and Jesus Christ? when their hearts received the sword that broke them wide open. So, you know, family memories um, of the beauty of relationship within a love, uh, with it, within a loving home is so important. And for those of you who are listening who say, well, that wasn't my experience. God understands and he made a provision for that. Because as I always say in my retreat work, you are perfectly loved by the perfect mother, Mary, and by the perfect father, God the Father, and by St. Joseph. So you, we have this perfect family uh, in whom we are plunged at our baptism. So we are loved. God has made a provision for the, the imperfection of human love by giving us the perfection of the, of the Holy Family's love and the perfection of the Trinitarian love. That is what our reality is if we will only acknowledge it in faith and be intentional about choosing that over anything else that is in the world that is from the flesh, the world, or the devil. It takes a, a, an intentionality uh, and, a, and a lot of prayer. As you say so beautifully, the relationship, you know, growing my relationship with the angels, the saints, with, with the Heavenly Father, and understanding that I am their child and that I am beloved. That's who my identity is. And when we know that, then the enemy actually fears us, really. They, a soul that is on fire with love for the Lord, that is enjoying divine intimacy, is praying, um, they become a real threat to the kingdom of darkness. Well, you must be scaring the living daylights out of those demons, <laughs> Kathleen. Holy cow. <laughs> I just hide behind the cloak of uh, Joseph and the and the mantle of Mary. I just did tuck myself in there. Perfect answer. Perfect answer. <laughs> oh, I, oh, boy, I wish we had more time. And I look forward to future conversations with you on this. But Kathleen, I, I just have to say real quick, I love every footnote. Don't look overlook the footnotes in this book because you cite so many wonderful works that uh, just if you look at just a few, you turn the page and like, oh, I want to go read that again. Or, oh, I have to check that out. This is such a, a joyful encouragement. You're constantly directing us in other avenues. There's never a, you know, I am the only one you can turn to for this resource. No, 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 not in your world. It's always go look, go follow, go, you know, listen deeply. And I think that is a really generous action of a humble author. I read a lot and I don't always see that. And so I really appreciate that, Kathleen. Chris, I'm so grateful that you picked that up because honestly, and this is what I have found for, you know, probably from the, from being fathered by the Monsignor John Essif and, uh, and other great exorcists like that, really in this ministry, we perceive ourselves to always be learners and uh, pupils of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, we have to look at the chief exorcist, Jesus Christ, and we are his pupils, you know, and and I feel like I am just a perpetual pupil, and I've been blessed to sit at the feet of so many gifted teachers, and I want to give the gift that I have received away. That's really what um, propelled me to write the book. I realized that God had given me uh, a very unique advan- uh, vantage point 
um, and formation. And it wasn't just for me, you know, I want this to be out there for everyone to learn from it and to be helped by it, hopefully. Oh, well, that sounds like a spiritual mama to me. <laughs> I really do. You're one of those spiritual mamas, Kathleen. <laughs> do I hope so. Well, again, I, I love the, the back of the book, not the end of the book. It's just the beginning. It's an open door to wonderful grace, those prayers, and even the case histories. It may not speak to everyone's particular experience. They're actually glimpses into hope. You know, we talked about faith, but also the incredible virtue of hope is all throughout this whole book. You know, sometimes I've read spiritual warfare books where it's, you're left feeling frightened. You don't with yours. You don't with yours. It's actually very liberating and filled with hope. Well, I am so grateful that you, that you say that because that was my intention. I, I, uh, and that's because I, I have great hope from witnessing so many extraordinary liberations. I've seen people that were deep, deep into the demonic, people that had really sold out Satanists, you know, mm-hmm. um, people that had been in satanic cults. And I have seen personally the most extraordinary power of the Lord Jesus Christ to crush the head of the serpent to rescue, reach down and rescue people from the pit and to bring them up and to give them a new life, a new understanding, and to make them his disciples who spread hope to others. Uh, After going through their terrible trials, they end up victorious in the end. And that's why I'm filled with hope. I would say this ministry has taught me you know, that God is always victorious. He really is. If there isn't a victory, it's maybe because the person doesn't entirely will to be victorious. Maybe they have taken on an identity that is too much of a victim and they won't uh, cooperate with God's grace. But if you cooperate with God's grace, he will bring you the liberation that he so desires for each and every one of us. Well, the, the only virtue I left out here is love. But then I, I would think that people would have to have experienced that just in this whole work is an act of love. What is love? God is love. So yes. the, the, the great yes that you gave in saying yes to this allows this fruitfulness of love to come out. So Kathleen, I, again, I, I look forward to our future conversations. I wish we had more time. Any final thought? Yes, I will say this. At the end of the book, I share a story of a priest Mm. who went through a terrible trial of faith when he was in the hospital and how the devil attacked him and how he was delivered through repeating the Apostles' Creed as a deliverance prayer. But I just want to share with your listeners today, Chris, that I would encourage you to pray very much for our priests, to put them under the mantle of St. Joseph and to keep placing them at the heart of the Holy Family because our priests are targeted by the evil spirits and they are meant to be spiritual fathers. And in this year of uh, St. Joseph, this is an opportunity for us to really invoke St. Joseph to impart his paternal heart to our priests. They definitely need that heart of a father and his virtues in order to be the priests that they are called to be. And so that they can help to um, help us um, through the sacramental life to be uh, witnesses to the light and to push back the darkness. So I just urge you to please spiritually adopt priests. Please, please join the Foundation of Prayer for Priests and become part of an army of intercessors for the priests. So easy. Just go to foundationforpriests.org. So easy. Foundation for Priests. Dot org. Just Google Foundation for Priests. It'll take you there, right there. Kathleen, thank you so very, very much. Thank you, Chris. God bless you. With Kathleen Beckman, we've gone inside the pages of A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, Strategies for Deliverance and Healing. To learn more about this book or to obtain a copy, go to sophiainstitute.com. The website for its publisher, Sophia Institute Press, or you can find it at any fine Catholic bookstore. To hear and or to download this conversation, along with 
hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission. And if you feel us worthy, consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax-deductible to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about discerninghearts.com. And join us next time for Inside the Pages, insights from today's most compelling authors.